Hey guys, welcome back to the shop and welcome back to the Trent Pinion Mill build. I've been corresponding with Kirk from Hemingway a little bit here and there and he did mention that I could be a little more liberal showing some of the drawings for this build. So I'll start off each of the segments from here forward um, showing some of the drawings involved with whatever we'll be doing and today we're going to be machining the knee. This is the casting as received, and this section of this drawing shows what we've got to do to it. This will be done in more than one stage. The first stage is to get it um, milled to dimension and shape, and then mill the dovetails vertically across the backside and horizontally across the top surface here. Later on, we'll be drilling through this way for the table or bed feed screw. Um, and very shortly after machining this piece as part of fitting it to the column, it will need to be recessed and a threaded hole put in up under here for the jacking screw. So there's a relief specified here that is basically just to clear the jacking screw nut so that the knee can sink down a little further. One thing I'm finding with machining castings is that it's pretty important to take some measurements of your rough casting and think about them in terms of the dimensions that you need on the finished product. Uh, this is a pretty good example. If you look at this, you don't have your real square surfaces here. This is just a rough casting. Somewhere encapsulated in this rough casting is the final part that you need. Making some careless decisions as to what you start with for reference surfaces when rough milling can lead to you kind of running out of space when you're roughing the part out. For example, you could choose a... see if I can visually illustrate this a little better here. You can end up in a situation where the rough casting is out of square enough that if you chose the wrong reference surface, you could end up milling a lot of material off of one end of a surface and get to a point where you haven't quite cleaned up the entire surface yet, yet you've reached your final dimension that you were shooting for, and you end up having to take off a little more than you really wanted to in the first place. So in this case, I'm looking at the dimensions of the top surface. And I know that we need this dimension to be about two inches by the time we're done. Again, none of these are super critical. And we've got at the thinnest part of this section just about two and an eighth inches. But then if you look, on this back surface, there are some low spots here, particularly around here. Now, where we're milling out most of this for dovetails anyways, most of this doesn't matter. But way on the outside end here, we do have a low spot that we need to consider. So if I measure from the other end here, from the lowest part of that low spot, we've got about two and a sixteenth inches. So our sort of critical section through this part this way is from the front surface here to this lowest part in the casting here. These are the, the sections of this casting in the rear that will uh, remain. You know, these will be the, the sections outside of the female dovetails. To further complicate things a little bit, if you look, there's a low section around the front here where the saw marks are. If we were to try to line up against that, you kind of have to do it by eye again, it, that's already two inches right on the money there. Again, the dimensions aren't critical. This is our primary focus for machining this part is to make sure that we make the most use we can out of the meat that's in between here. And one way to accomplish that would be to 
machine away enough of this top surface here that we get rid of some of these saw marks that are kind of uh, cutting into this corner a little bit. The overall height here is apparently a complete mystery. No, it's two, inch two inches. <laughs> We're already pretty well right at two inches here. And on the other side, we're going to be a little more, nope, exactly two inches. So the decision to make now is if we've got to have one dimension a little bit lean, either this dimension to get a full depth along here, or this dimension so that we can keep all of the height we have here, which would be our preference. Both of these are surfaces that involve a contact area of the dovetails. So going this way, we've got the bearing surface of the vertical dovetails to consider. The more height we have here, the more bearing surface we have. But going this way, we're not really sacrificing anything. We can be a little bit shy on this dimension here, and it's not going to affect the bearing surface of the dovetails along here or down here. So that's what I'm leaning towards now is stealing a little bit of our dimension this way to keep everything we can going this way. Which means that we'll want to set up with this being a reference surface such that when we clean this up we're removing uh, a pretty even amount of material end to end and side to side here. You know, rather than you know taking off a bunch of material on one side and, and very little on the other, so that we make full use of this height along here. And if we just check for taper along this again, this is our top surface. We got you know right on the money two inches, and if anything, just a hair under two inches on this end. So there's really not a whole lot of taper to this, so I think our reference surfaces that we focus on are going to be the top surface here, followed by the back surface here. Before machining the dovetails, of course, we'll want to hit all the other surfaces as well. And the bottom surface here, you know, using this against the bottom of the vise or the mill table, um, will just get cut enough to, uh, to clean up the rough casting. These surfaces you know, along here don't have to be machined for anything, but I think it's going to look a lot nicer if we do machine them. And these ends, I suppose if we're careful throughout the rest of the process, don't need to be perfectly square to everything else, but I would like them to be because it will make setting up a little bit easier later on because we'll need to put a hole through here for the bed feed screw that will be perfectly parallel with the dovetails that will be cut in here. So what I will be tempted to do is after these two surfaces are uh, faced is to set up in the vise or maybe clamp directly to the milling table and just hit the bottom surface real quick here and then at the same time come down with that long end mill again and get these ends in the same setup. Because again, if I've done this, I can indicate along this back side to ensure that the x-axis is aligned with it. We'll have the reference surface down here already taken care of. And then that will leave just some cosmetic milling of these surfaces. Once all that's done, we can go back and mill the dovetails. And the dovetails are going to have to be perfectly square to one another. And ideally, we want the dovetail across the top to be perfectly square with both ends again, so that that setup for putting in the feed screw hole is a little bit easier. So, let's get to it. Here, I'm roughing out the rear surface of the knee casting using the rough cast front of the knee as a reference.
For rough milling the top surface of the knee, I set up using a little machinist square as a parallel along the front and back side of the work. The idea was to set it up so that as little material as possible needed to be removed from the top surface. The next few operations you see are going to be milling the surfaces that don't really have to be milled. This is just for cosmetic purposes. For this section under the front of the knee, I'm using an end mill with a chamfer on the cutting end. This gives it just a nice finished look. And now rough milling the ends. Now the real fun starts, milling the dovetails. I'm going to start by slotting and milling the dovetails for the column. And I'll mill them to fit the column exactly, then come back and step over on one side by the thickness of the gib strip that I'm using. Have I mentioned how much I love these roughing end mills? As I mentioned earlier, here the sides are being side milled in the same setup that the top dovetails will be cut. 
Now the same thing for the dovetail on the top surface, except here I don't have a part to test fit into it yet. But still the same thing applies, I'm going to mill the dovetails off-center by the width of the gib strip. This seemed like a good time to drill and tap the column gib screws on the side of the knee. There are four adjusting screws and then a locking screw in the center. That just about wraps it up for now. I'm real happy with how the knee is looking so far. I'll need to make a set of gib screws and spend some time scraping the column in the knee, so expect to see some of that in the next episode. As always, thanks for watching.